Okay, good morning and welcome. Um, just to point out the two fire exits either side down here, so in the event of the fire alarm going off, uh, just make your way to the nearest exit and then out of the building. Um, good morning and thank you for coming. I realise you're probably going to see a number of different presentations this morning. So we'll try and finish up, myself and, and Professor Basu, within the 25 minutes. But we'll be waiting outside the lecture theatre here if you've any questions at the end. Now, we're going to talk to you today about civil engineering, but I'll try when we're going through it to also give you some sort of a flavour of the other branches of engineering too, because I realise not, not all of you are wedded to the idea of civil. So, when you look at the different professions, a lot of you will be trying to say, well, how can I make a difference? What sort of profession, if I want to change the world, what sort of profession should I think about? Well, civil engineering might be an, an ideal choice because at one level, you leave a legacy behind you. You're working on big projects. You're having a real impact on the environment. And certain aspects of civil engineering, like environmental engineering, you find by providing fresh water and uh, sanitary services, you actually make a huge difference, particularly in, say, some of the uh, countries in the developing world. Civil is one of a number of branches of, of engineering. In fact, it's the, the oldest of the branches. The term civil really was originally just to distinguish it from military. So civil still has this very broad base. It covers structures, geotechnics, energy engineering, ground engineering, tunneling, transportation engineering, huge range of different types. And of course, there are other talks later on today on mechanical engineering, electronic, computer engineering, biomedical, aeronautical engineering, chemical engineering. Although aeronautical and chemical, these are two uh, s specific branches that aren't dealt with directly here in, in Trinity College. Though many of our students go on and might do uh, postgraduates in, in, in these areas. What is it that uh, Trinity College has to offer? Well, first of all, we offer an engineering education. It's not just about training you for a particular uh, specialist area. Part of the, the value of an engineering education is we're developing you as problem solvers. And many engineers actually end up finally working in management in different branches of, of industry. So you get a, you get a very broad education. I'm going to start off now with one of the, the areas of civil engineering, environmental engineering. I'm showing you a, a quite a dramatic photograph just to show you uh, some of the work that has been done by colleagues of mine in the developing world. You can see the picture there of Danfor. This is their source of water. Even sometimes fairly simple solutions where wells are capped so that the sort of excrement from the animals isn't being washed back down into the drinking water can have a dramatic effect. Now that's at one end of the scale. At the other end, in Ireland, we're also struggling with problems with providing uh, fresh drinking water and all sorts of pathogens that, that, uh, that occur. If you think about it, nothing has saved more lives than the provision of fresh water across the world. Far more impact even than, than uh, the advances that have been made in medicine. <coughs> Just simply providing fresh water to people. Uh, of course, Everybody's aware of the problems of climate change at the moment, or potential climate change, and flooding. This would be another aspect that, that falls in under the area of environmental engineering and civil engineering. In transportation engineering, providing the infrastructure that we use to get people in and out and goods in and out of the country. I've included here some slides showing the Dublin Airport terminal at the stage before it was constructed. So I mean, th this was the sort of uh, these are the sort of projects that our graduates have worked on. Um, big thing that you see about civil engineering, large scale, having a big impact on the world around us. Same with when you look at port engineering. This is Dublin port from, a, from the air. So you get a sense of the sort of scale at which civil engineering work, works. Sorry, it's a bit temperamental. Okay. 
in addition, though, not everything to do with civil is, is large scale. I've got a picture of the Lewis there, but maybe what's even more important is the control systems that are being put in here. Control systems for traffic lights, for traffic control. So civil engineering, very, very numeric discipline. A lot of control systems involved. I'm giving you the example here for transportation, but it also works through for environmental engineering, energy systems, structural engineering. And um, Professor Basu is going to talk about some of the more uh, technical aspects of structural engineering and control systems later on in the presentation. Geotechnical engineering, I'm just giving you, enough, again showing you the breadth of civil engineering. Some of you might remember the landslides that we had over in the west of Ireland there a few years ago. This is where the whole hillside started to slide down and all the people in the houses living down here were in danger of their houses being swept away by the hillside sliding down. Well, it was one of my colleagues who, uh, who was taken up by helicopter to look at this and see, was it safe for the people to go back into the houses? Did some simple calculations just looking at what we had was effectively a layer of soil resting on top of a layer of stone. And the calculations were relatively simple. Looking at the friction that was being developed between the soil and the stone in the presence of a lot of moisture, was that lubricating the the interface between the two, but very, very real problems. And we needed, they needed solutions very quickly and needed to, to see, you know, was it safe to let people come back in over the bridge and back into their houses? Again, just emphasizing the scale of works. This was part of the Kildare Bypass. And you, you can see the sort of effect that civil engineering works have on the landscape. Now, you might be a bit apprehensive when you see this and say, are we doing damage to the environment when we do construction on this scale? And the answer is no. An awful lot of work that went into this particular section of the Kildare Bypass and the motorway down to Cork involved making sure that Pollardstown Fen, which was maybe uh, about a kilometre or two away from here, wasn't affected. So all of this special tanking was put in to make sure that the water levels didn't drop and the wildlife habitat of the fens wasn't affected. So three different environmental engineers on our, in our department were involved. One on the side of the people doing the work, one looking after the FEN, and a third member of our staff was actually involved in the adjudication sort of group monitoring the work. Okay. Other aspects of geotechnical engineering. Here, this is the Dublin Port Tunnel. This is just as the tunneling machine was about to break out. So you can see all the workers here. An awful lot of monitoring was done, again, by staff and students in the department looking at the vibrations that were being developed uh, during the tunneling to make sure structures weren't damaged. Structural engineering is what we tend to think of. So I've got some pictures of, of bridges here, but of course we, we're also looking at the energy rating of buildings, watching the flow of energy, because that's, that's very important at the moment. These slightly low-quality images and here a picture of a physical model. These are all Irish bridges. These are all images and models generated before the Boyne Bridge was built, before the Dargan Bridge, and before the Joyce Bridge. Again, um, this was the Beckett Bridge at a very early stage of design. Some of my colleagues involved in the design of the support systems. Of course, then we have earthquake engineering. Very, very uh, important topic right around the world. And this is just a picture of a large-scale bridge. This is a base isolation. This allows the bridge to actually move laterally on the piers in an earthquake, in a sort of controlled manner so that the bridge isn't damaged. Now, bridge, no bridge. Dam, no dam, and the result the Armagh train accident, bridges collapsing. You can see engineering is a very, very responsible profession. Just like medicine or anything else, you really need to make sure you get a, a, a firm and good education. Uh, I can tell you none of these structures were designed by Trinity engineers. Um, now, I'm going to pass over to Professor Basu, who's, who's the head of civil engineering. Um, 
you have been already exposed to a gamut of different things uh, civil engineers are involved in uh, by Professor Odwar. Uh, what I'm going to do now is give you a glimpse of things that we do in TCD, particularly in the area of civil engineering, but also collaborating with broadly different fields of other engineering and other schools as well. And as uh, Professor Dwyer was saying, civil engineering is a very broad field, and obviously that's the reason why we collaborate quite a lot uh, across the board from, say, sociologists and psychologists to computer scientists and physicists. So uh, there we go. So this is actually the uh, civil engineering building uh, named uh, after Simon Perry, who was a former professor. So Simon Perry building, and you might have seen this already. Um, uh, if, you, if you haven't, just uh, uh, when you're going out, maybe you can pass by. Uh, and inside this building, we do a lot of interesting things uh, which you'd be exposed to if you come to civil engineering in Trinity. And um, this is one of the things. For example, this is our uh, structural engineering laboratory uh, housed in that building. And um, the left one, you can see, shows our testing frame. And you can see some uh, connections on the top left corner um, over there, and uh, I'll show you that similar kind of connections actually are there in other realistic structures. Uh, on, the, on the right here, this is actually a glass fiber reinforced concrete which we are testing here. So the uh, purpose of putting in glass fibers inside concrete is to increase the strength without increasing the weight of the structure. And it's used in marina and a lot of other structures. So uh, it has a lot of other interesting properties. So that's the material end of the civil engineering. You can actually design new materials, and those are used right across the board from uh, automotive aerospace to civil engineering and mechanical applications. Um, this is actually the San Francisco Airport Tunnel, and I was talking about this moment-resisting connection in our structures lab, and you can see this is actually what is there. So this uh, t terminal uh, building has actually a support, which is a moment-resisting connection here. And as civil engineers, we are actually designing this, but also uh, innovating the design by putting, you can see, because it's a seismic-prone area, again, a base isolation system, uh, which you have seen before. And this is on new materials like elastomeric bearing. And this can be either passive, or you can actually actively control the behavior of these. Um, this is a former uh, student of ours, and he is actually testing a prototype wind turbine in our lab in structural engineering. And we do a lot of work in the area of broadly renewables, wind, wave, solar, building energy management, um, geothermal, tidal, uh, but we have strong focus on wind and wave and building energy management. And so we have a lot of work uh, going on at the moment in the area of wind energy trying to design new wind turbines, which are very large. We are trying to increase the aerodynamic efficiency to generate more power and to see how they can be uh, connected to the grid so that it can su supply power to the grid and, for example, to electric vehicles if you're charging your electric vehicle, um, which is quite topical and falls within the remit of uh, transportation, but also within the building energy management and also connected to uh, the broad area of renewables. Uh, these are some of the uh, emerging areas in civil engineering. For example, on the left-hand side, again, these are uh, Bucky papers or carbon nanotube-based sensors, and you can inbuilt these sensors in the structures, and the structures can be monitored by using these. And th this is actually, those who are aware of some basic chemistry, it's a different isotope of chemistry with C60 and has a lot of interesting properties. So that's the material end of civil engineering where we closely work with, for example, the physicists. Uh, this is actually a stiffness varying damper, and uh, I'll show you an interesting application of this very soon. Um, and this one shows how we can use remote sensing techniques to monitor the health of the, the structures. Uh, like we monitor the health of a, a person by using EEG or EMG or other kind of signals, or blood pressure monitoring, or other physiological signals. Here we can actually use image-based techniques to look at the structure, look at the crack propagation, and um, identify the health. Uh, this is an application of uh, the glass re reinforced concrete uh, composite. And 
Uh, obviously, this is uh, Heathrow uh, Terminal and Heathrow. Uh, the, the tunnel here actually uses the GRCs, which I showed you previously was being tested. Um, again, uh, an interesting photograph, and, and the right one is probably, uh, I mean, you have seen this, uh, but the left one is actually uh, a building in Taiwan, and it was a tall building, so it was subjected to a lot of wind-induced excitation. And to control that, civil engineers had to use uh, different kind of innovative techniques, and we use something called an active damper, and I'll show the uh, photograph, actually. And the right one is actually a sp the spire um, here, and the spire also has a similar kind of system called tune mass dampers. So this is the, the system that was designed to stop the structure from vibrating. And this is used in different kind of tall and flexible structures, including bridges, tall towers, wind turbines, wind turbine blades, and other uh, applications as well. So uh, at the top of the tower, this was a mass which was hanging like a pendulum. And when the building moved, this particular mass actually moved out of phase and controlled the motion of the building. So the energy was transferred from the building to the uh, mass here, and thereby uh, stopping the building from deteriorating or causing any damage. Um, Heathrow ATC, this is the airport traffic controller. Now this is an interesting case actually because initially uh, this is a 76 story tower for Heathrow Terminal 5 and uh, on the top it's a five story steel structure. So that's the control unit. And this had to be operated 24 seven obviously. But what happened was when the design was completed there was so much of vibration due to wind, uh, people were not actually able to uh, sit here and walk. So it had to be retrofitted later by a damper, which was again designed by civil engineers, not uh, exactly by Trinity people, but a colleague of mine actually, he was involved in, in this design. Um, uh, and what they did, and he was a civil, he's a civil engineer, and they used this as an active mass damper. So they controlled the motion of this active mass damper and stopped this uh, ATC from vibrating. And the total cost probably was uh, close, I mean, this, this was probably about two million, but that was about 2% of the total cost of the structure. So sometimes you can see that uh, innovative solutions uh, can only increase the cost by 2%, but can give you a huge amount of benefit. Uh, and that's a typical example where civil engineering innovation uh, is working, actually. And this was, uh, the BAA was the client, actually, for this one. Um, uh, again, talk of the dampers. I mean, bridges are, again, uh, susceptible to wind-induced excitations, and cables can vibrate, as we'll show you in a, a short video very soon. Uh, but you can actually use semi-active dampers. The one we were testing in, in our lab in Trinity College, which is actually being developed for wind turbine-based applications and wave energy converters, can be also used for uh, bridges, for example. And, sorry. Uh, and this is actually... Uh, the one we had in our lab is a prototype, but this, uh, this is a full-scale one, uh, and we are working on some full-scale full damper design for uh, bridges, particularly the cable state bridges, which are flexible. Um, so uh, with this, maybe I'll go on to the next slide, which is uh, going to show you a spectacular uh, video of vibration of uh, a cable state bridge. And mind that uh, these kind of vibration problems are uh, quite uh, commonly seen even currently, and Millennium Bridge is one example. Uh, the Orison Bridge that was built uh, connecting Denmark and Norway, uh, that was only back in 2006 and seven. and uh, the consultant, he came to Trinity and he uh, gave a lecture on that, but soon after it, it was opened, the cables were susceptible to vibration, and unlike uh, expectations that you'd have strong uh, vibration caused by uh, strong wind and strong rain, these vibrations are caused by uh, light wind and light rain, actually. So uh, that's very interesting. Uh, and these are different facets of civil engineering you'll be actually studying uh, if you come to Trinity College, for example. So uh, uh, how to stop this? Okay, we can just play it separately. Okay, just click on this. Okay, this is the second seven bridge, and you can see that the Cables will be vibrating, and then uh, I won't say you'll see what happens. <laughs> now, let's see if we can be familiar with Max. It must be one of these ones down here. 
Okay. Well, we'll go out of the presentation. Thank yeah, you. Yes. Okay, we're out of the presentation now, I think. Mm -hmm. So, it one of these, these files down on the bottom. I don't know if you know how that works. This one? Well, try it if you have. He opened it up, so it be... Document. Or, or try, try the, try the quick time player and see, because he has it. Supposedly. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, this wasn't the right to help. <coughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, anyway, what happened was after the, the cables started vibrating, they started hitting each other, and one of the cables snapped, actually. And so that, that was another video. When I had another video of a wind turbine blade we were testing in our lab. I don't know whether, uh, so maybe we'll back, get going back to the PowerPoint. Yeah, so this works. Sorry, I'm back at the frame. Uh, so this is a 2.5 kilowatt wind turbine blade, which we are testing in the Trinity College uh, Civil Engineering Lab. And the sensor we have is a wireless sensor because if you have a large wind turbine, uh, it may not be possible to have cabled or wired sensors. So we're using wired, wireless sensors, but also we are testing the wind turbine blade for the structural integrity and aerodynamic efficiency. So, um, okay. So this is the, the structure you have. I mean, if you... Uh, choose Trinity College as your uh, engineering uh, education career in the future. The first two years uh, are going to be a common program, and then uh, after that, you specialize in the third, fourth, and the fifth year subsequently. And, um, uh, and these are some of the skill sets we'd be uh, training you on in your uh, third, fourth, and fifth year, typically, in the sophistry years, including the discipline-specific uh, technologies. Okay, and this is actually uh, engineering as a sustainable future, you can see. Um, and finally, this is uh, going to give you an overview of the structure of the program we have. And I think this is also available. So I think yeah, no, just slides. since you remind, but make it, just hit the slideshow from this button here. This is to let you see it bigger. Over to Max today to try and record this presentation. Uh, do you want to go to the end? Or? Yeah. yeah. We'll just go to the end. I'm just going to say while we're, while we're looking for the for the last slide here, which sort of shows the structure, we're putting it up there in case any of you had any might have heard that that engineering across the country is moved to five-year courses. So we're going to put up the a slide showing you that in, in Trinity we have a system where the first two years are common. Um, so you, you, you take lectures across the general engineering sciences, maths, physics, chemistry, and then you're exposed to civil engineering, mechanical engineering, electronic engineering, computer engineering, um, biomedical engineering, environmental engineering. So two years come. At the end of two years, you have a free choice as to which of the streams of engineering you want to go in, into. And there are six. Civil engineering, mechanical engineering, electronic, computer engineering, biomedical engineering and we have a, uh, another stream which is sort of a combination of computer engineering and electronic engineering where you're looking at both the software engineering and the hardware engineering. So those are the six sort of six streams. Students work in, in the, that particular area for, for two years and then can graduate with an honours level eight BAI degree but there's a requirement now that to become a chartered engineer you need a level nine qualification. 
So the majority of students will be staying on for an additional fifth year, and they leave college after five years with a master's in engineering in that particular field. Having the two years common is a very good idea because when you go out into the uh, into industry, you, you'll be working in an environment where you need to liaise with mechanical, electronic, computer engineers. You know, it's not as broken down into its disciplines as you'd imagine. So having that broad uh, basis uh, makes for a very good, flexible engineer. Now, we're probably going to have to get out of this room, I think, but we'll be outside, so if you have any questions, you can come up and ask us. And I'd also invite you to go over to the printing house and have a look at the, talk to some of the students there, have a look at the different stands, introducing you to the different types of engineering.